If you've gotten to know a narcissist well enough, you've probably noticed that the very things that they seem to love about you in the beginning, the very things that drew them to you, seem to be the very things that they're using to devalue you. So why does that happen? Because these are the things that they see as weaknesses. And yes, that is also why they were drawn to you because of these characteristics. But just because the narcissist sees them as weakness doesn't mean that they are. So we're going to go through this list of 10 things narcissists see as weakness. We're going to talk about why they see them as weaknesses and why most of them are really just strengths. My name is Christina and this channel is dedicated to helping you recognize and deal with the aftermath of emotional abuse. So if that's something that's touched your life, consider subscribing. And if you think you've encountered a narcissist, I have a free download that you'll find in the description box below that might help you sort things out. So one of the things that a narcissist will see as weakness is empathy. And yes, this is also something that will draw them into you. When a narcissist sees somebody who's highly empathetic, they're definitely going to test those boundaries because someone who's highly empathetic and lacks boundaries is going to be, unfortunately, a good target for the narcissist. So anyone who's looking to take advantage of another person, if they see that you are highly empathetic and you truly care about other people's problems, other people's pain, especially if you're a fixer, the narcissist will likely try to use that against you. Now, being empathetic is an amazing characteristic, and it's not something that you should walk away from, even if you're thinking now that it's a weakness. It's truly not a weakness. Empathy is an extraordinarily powerful trait, but it must be paired with appropriate boundaries. Because without those boundaries, you're going to miss all the red flags. You're going to miss the signs that someone is taking advantage of you because you're so interested in helping them. Another thing that a narcissist will see as a weakness is forgiveness. And you may have encountered this. I know a lot of people do where you're with a narcissist and you end up forgiving someone else in your life. But the person, this, this narcissist in your life just can't believe, they're almost angry, or maybe they are actually angry that you have forgiven someone else, even if it has nothing to do with them. Because they see this so much as a sign of weakness. And you'll see the evidence of this in how a narcissist will cut people off without a second thought. How they can discard anyone and everyone in their life and seem to not care at all about the ramifications. The only time the narcissist seems to like forgiveness is when you are forgiving them for their wrongdoings. And they will ask for your forgiveness over and over again, even if they don't actually use the words, I'm sorry. If you're going to be with a narcissist for any period of time, you're going to have to be a forgiving person because they're very likely to take advantage of you. They're likely to lie to you. And if it's a romantic relationship, they're very likely to cheat on you in one way or another. And this is all because a narcissist will exploit someone's weaknesses for their own personal gain. So a narcissist truly at their core, they're out for themselves. They are out for number one. That's what a narcissist is. And there are other personalities that are more likely to exploit people just for the fun of it. A narcissist will exploit people for their personal gain. So if they're not going to get anything out of it, they're probably not looking for ways to take advantage of you. But unfortunately, because narcissists have a strong desire for supply, attention, admiration, things of that nature, it can be really difficult to see what this person wants from you. It could seem like they're genuine and they just want a connection instead of wanting a follower or a subject, which is more what it's like to be in a relationship with a narcissist. So another thing that a narcissist sees as a sign of weakness is vulnerability. If you can show vulnerability and be open and to talk about your feelings, the narcissist is going to see this as a sign of weakness. And that's really because you're dealing with somebody who's very much not in touch with their own feelings. Now, make no mistake about it, they are very vulnerable. And you'll notice this if you ever inflict a narcissistic injury. If you ever hurt the narcissist's fragile ego, you'll know how easy it is to do. So they are vulnerable. 
But what we're talking about here is showing vulnerability and letting people see the real you. This includes all of your flaws and all of your messy emotions because we're human and we all have them. In the beginning, a narcissist will see this as a good thing. They will enjoy your vulnerability. They will encourage you to be vulnerable with them. But this doesn't last very long. And the things that they learn about you in that stage where they're encouraging your vulnerability are things that they will eventually use against you. So the next thing we're talking about here is trust. Trust is something that a narcissist will see as a weakness. And if you notice, if you know a narcissist, you'll know that they're not trusting people at all. They trust people about as much as they can be trusted. And that's because they think that everyone is like them. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It's very difficult to understand what it's like to lack empathy when you have a healthy amount of emotional empathy. And the same is true in reverse. So a narcissist is somebody who lacks empathy, and it's very difficult for them to understand what it's like to have that empathy. It's not really something that you can explain with words. So they can look at all of these things that they see as weaknesses, but they don't really understand what it feels like to be inside your head. And so therefore they don't really understand the thought process that somebody would have with empathy. So they just assume that everyone is going to be as ruthless as they would be and they don't trust people at all. And if you do trust people, they think you're a sucker or you're weak. Now, being trusting is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of security and confidence as long as you have good boundaries. So you shouldn't necessarily trust everyone, but if you can trust people who are actually trustworthy, who have proven themselves to be trustworthy to you, then that's a sign of strength and confidence. But it definitely takes time to build up the ability to trust people after you've been through serious emotional abuse. So if you're in that place where you're not trusting anyone, definitely don't beat yourself up over it. Healing is definitely a journey. But also, don't listen to the narcissist. Being trusting, it might be a goal. It might not be where you're at right now, and that's okay. But it's also not a weakness. So the next thing I want to talk about is dependence. A narcissist will see your dependence on them as a weakness. And it may be something that draws them in in the beginning. Now, dependence is an exception to this list that definitely can be a weakness. If you are dependent on someone else, you, it puts you in a very vulnerable position. And this isn't the good type of vulnerability. This is where someone else has the power to take you down. They have the power to destroy you. And I hate to say it, but all of us who have been in relationships with narcissists at some point have become dependent, whether we were in the beginning or not. There's something called a trauma bond that's akin to Stockholm syndrome, where you experience emotional abuse and then you feel tied to your abuser. You feel dependent on them for your happiness, for your well-being. But all the while, they're destroying it behind the scenes. It absolutely feels like a no-win situation. But there are some times when people are more dependent when they meet a narcissist. And this could have to do with personality types. It could have to do with where you are in life. If you're at a point where you're grieving, or if you just moved to a new place and you don't know anyone, and you need some sort of emotional support, it seems like this person's going to give it to you. You may be emotionally dependent and a narcissist will be very good at picking up on that and filling in everything that they think you need. But over time, you see the truth and that's that the narcissist sees that dependence as a weakness and it is something that they will absolutely exploit. So another thing that a narcissist sees as a weakness is emotional expression. And this is similar to vulnerability and they can absolutely go hand in hand. But what I'm talking about here is facial expressions, body language. So if somebody can look at you and know exactly what you're thinking and feeling, or they can know if you're happy or sad or angry, a narcissist will see this as weakness and they will exploit it. Now, there are different types of empathy. There's the emotional empathy, and that's usually what we're talking about when we talk about empathy. And there's also something called cognitive empathy, and that's really just the ability to understand 
that people have emotions and to recognize those emotions in other people. Emotional empathy is more about putting yourself in someone else's shoes and relating to those emotions, relating on that human level. It's a different level of connection. So a narcissist very deeply lacks the emotional empathy, but they have cognitive empathy in spades and they can become extremely good at reading you very fast. And the easier it is for them to do it, the more they see it as a sign of weakness. For example, if they can tell when you're lying, they're definitely going to see that as a sign of weakness because that is something that most narcissists build up through the years. They build that poker face so they can pretend that everything's fine when they're lying, cheating, and stealing behind your back. So another thing that a narcissist will see as weakness is humility. Now with this one, we definitely have to talk about the covert or vulnerable narcissist because this type of narcissist will absolutely show humility, but it's not genuine. So for this sign of weakness, this is more about the overt or grandiose narcissist. This is somebody who will not admit their flaws at any cost. This is a narcissist that flaunts their sense of superiority. So when someone else is putting themselves down, they're definitely going to see that as a sign of weakness. And again, in the beginning, this is something that they may exploit and they may encourage. So if you meet a narcissist in your adult life and you're sort of self-deprecating around them, you're putting yourself down all the time, the narcissist probably isn't going to put up much of a fight. They'll let you go on so that they can see where your vulnerabilities are. They can see what you are truly insecure about. And make no mistake about it, these are things that they will exploit later on. They will use these insecurities against you. And this can be very dangerous because these are things that are really deep within us. And they're usually part of our subconscious programming that drives all of our decisions in life. But once a narcissist can latch on to one of those beliefs, what they do is they encourage it. It might be subtle at first, but over time it will get to you and they will validate that belief that you have about yourself over and over and over again until that subconscious belief is so strong and your self-worth is so destroyed that you feel almost like a shell of yourself. So is humility truly a weakness? In my humble opinion, <laughs> I think that it's not a weakness as long as we're not putting ourselves down. I think it's really good to be aware of our strengths and weaknesses and to understand that we don't know everything. But when we cross that line and we start putting ourselves down, I think that's when we might need to keep ourselves in check a little bit. So this next thing that a narcissist sees as a weakness, I know, is a favorite among you out there, and that is boundaries. And this can be a little bit confusing because Boundaries are what can help save you from a narcissist. Boundaries can make you undesirable to a narcissist. So this is not one of those things that will draw them in. It's one of those things that will keep them out. But a narcissist will always put down someone with strong boundaries and they will not think highly of that person because they can't get to them. And they may think that that person is weak, so they have to put up walls. They have to put up a fortress to keep the narcissist out. But that's not what boundaries are. The truth is narcissists don't understand boundaries. Usually boundaries are nothing more than a set of rules of how you're going to allow someone to interact with you. So more or less the type of behavior you're going to put up with. So narcissists can see boundaries as a weakness, but Ultimately, it's because they don't really understand boundaries at all. Another thing that a narcissist will see as weakness goes hand in hand with empathy, and that is compassion. So when you're compassionate, you show concern for other people. And often this concern comes in the form of sympathy, which is different than empathy. But if you're a compassionate person, you may go out of your way to help others. And that's one of the differences between compassion and empathy. So to oversimplify, if you see somebody suffering, empathy will help you put yourself in that person's shoes to know what it must feel like to be that person. And compassion is the part that usually kicks in afterwards. And that's where we start asking, how can I help? What can I do to help this person stop suffering? So compassion is definitely something that a narcissist can use to exploit you. And for that reason, they also see it as a weakness. 
They expect you to have compassion for them, but if they see you having compassion for others, it makes you weak. And another thing that a narcissist will see as weakness is self-reflection. So if you're somebody who has a really good sense of who you are, you're going to be able to admit when you made a mistake and you're going to be able to course correct, right? You're going to be able to change your behavior. And I know that if you're watching this right now, you're well aware that a narcissist cannot and does not do that. They can sometimes say, I'm sorry. They can sometimes seem to admit fault, but you know that it is surface level, that it is not genuine because they don't change their behavior. So they might say, I'm sorry, I hurt you in this way. And then they keep hurting you in that same way over and over again. So if you can reflect on things that you've done wrong and change your behavior, this is definitely a sign of weakness to the narcissist because it's something they can exploit. If they could just make you see that you were wrong, then you're going to change your behavior and they could just keep doing that to infinity. All along, they never change their behavior. So I want to be very clear that self-reflection is not a form of weakness. Actually, it is an incredible strength. If you can reflect on who you are, you can have a good understanding of your own authenticity. You know exactly who you are and you know what you can do to improve yourself. This is not the case for a narcissist. When someone knows everything, they really know nothing. So if you're with a narcissist and things get difficult and they inevitably will, the only chance for change is for the other person to change. But that's not sustainable because that's not how any relationship works, especially when the person who's refusing to change is the one who's causing the problems. So if you can relate to these things that narcissists see as weaknesses, congratulations, you're actually pretty strong. But if you're watching this video, you probably encountered a narcissist and maybe could use a little help with boundaries. Because remember, boundaries are the one thing that will repel any narcissist. And in this video right here, I break down the do's and don'ts of setting boundaries and keeping them with a narcissist. So give that one a watch and I'll see you next time.